All right. So today we're um, we're diving into something kind of different. Yeah. A plan to revamp leadership training at the Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Right. We're talking about a 2003 document that's basically like a blueprint for building leaders. Mm. It's super detailed, technical, and it honestly makes you wonder, can a 20-year-old document from a shipyard really tell us anything about building better leaders today? Well, it just might. Really? Yeah. You see, this isn't just some outdated training manual. This document is a curriculum architecture design. Okay. And it's laser focused on performance improvements, specifically for Code 900 supervisors and zone managers. Curriculum architecture design sounds pretty official. Right. So what what sparked this whole thing was the shipyard facing some kind of leadership crisis back then? Not a crisis, yeah. um, but they definitely knew they needed to step up their game. They were facing performance gaps. Okay. And they knew that if they wanted to fix that, they needed strong leadership. Yeah, makes sense. Think of it like this. You wouldn't build a skyscraper with shaky foundations. Right. So they realized they needed to give their leaders a rock-solid foundation of skills and knowledge to keep things running smoothly. And they went all in on building that foundation, huh? This document mentions hundreds of shipyard personnel involved, top performers, managers, you name it. Oh, yeah. They even brought in a consultant with a serious track record, a guy named Guy Wallace. Yeah, they were serious. They knew that to build effective leaders, you got to understand what makes a leader effective in the first place. Yeah. And that's where it gets really interesting. They didn't just want to throw together a few workshops or lectures. So what do they do? They use something called the PAC-CT process. PAC-CT process. What is that some kind of fancy acronym? You know what it is. It stands for performance-based Accelerated customer stakeholder driven training and development. Okay, let's break that down. Performance based makes sense. You want training that actually leads to results. Right. But accelerated, were they trying to rush things? No, no, it's not about rushing, but about making the most of people's time. They knew training shouldn't be a time suck. I hear that. It should be targeted efficient and directly applicable to the work people are doing. Okay, so that's where the customer stakeholder driven part comes in. Exactly. They wanted to make sure the training met everyone's needs from the shipyard itself to the individual employees. Exactly. So it's about building a program that's tailored to the shipyard environment. Yeah, and to do that, they knew they couldn't just rely on generic leadership principles. Mm -hmm. They needed to figure out what made a master performer in the context of a shipyard. Interesting. So how do they do that? They got granular, like really granular. What do you mean? We're talking performance models and knowledge skill matrices. Yeah. Imagine breaking down a master chef's signature dish. Okay. They didn't just want the ingredients list. They wanted to know every whisk stroke, every oven temperature tweak. Wow. That's the level of detail they went for with their top performers. That makes sense. In a shipyard, precision is everything. Right. But I'm picturing pages of charts and graphs here. How did they turn all that data into actual training? So they took all that data and um, turned it into like training materials, right? Yeah, they broke it down into what they called T&D modules. T&D modules. Yeah, think of them like tools in a toolkit. Okay. Each one designed to tackle a specific skill or area of knowledge that they needed. So instead of just handing someone a giant toolbox and saying, good luck, they're giving them the right tool for the right job. Exactly. Like, for example, module 4001002. What's that one about? That's all about planning and conducting work readiness. Sounds important. Oh, it's crucial. What's it about? Making sure that before any work even starts, every single detail is accounted for. Yeah. In a shipyard, I imagine even forgetting a wrench could really screw things up. Absolutely. So this module it outlines everything. Like what? Reviewing technical documents, verifying materials, conducting pre-job briefings, assigning tasks, even coordinating with other shops. Wow. They really thought of everything, huh? It's a shipyard. Right. It's all about teamwork and interconnected systems. Exactly. But OK, you've got these modules. How do you actually deliver the training? So they were really thoughtful about that. They used a blended approach, a mix of different methods. OK. For instance, let's take module 4001541, how to manage tools. Sounds kind of basic. Right. But you'd be surprised. I guess so. This module covers everything from inventory control and preventative maintenance to safety procedures for specialized equipment. Okay, so it's more than just knowing where the wrench is. Way more. Yeah. And for this one, they imagined using a mix of self-paced materials, like maybe an online course or handbook, and then also coaching from a more experienced supervisor. So you get the knowledge and the hands-on experience. Precisely. So that makes sense. But with so many modules, 
how did they make sure people weren't totally overwhelmed with information? That is a great question, and it gets to the heart of their approach. They were really big on this idea of just-in-time training. Just-in-time training. Yeah. Instead of throwing everything at people at once, they timed the training to match up with work assignments. Ah, uh, so you learn what you need right when you need it. Exactly. Uh. It minimizes the information overload and keeps things relevant. Makes sense. It's like trying to learn a new language all at once versus picking it up as you go. Perfect analogy. So that's how they dealt with the information overload. But how did they actually make sure people were retaining and using what they learned? Ah, getting to the heart of it. Right. I mean, training is only good if it actually makes a difference, right? Absolutely. So uh, how did they make sure it stuck, like that the training actually stuck? Well, they have these things called capstone reviews built right in. Ah, uh, capstone reviews. What are those like big final exams? Kind of, but more like checkpoints along the way. Okay. You know, making sure people were picking up what they needed. Got it. These capstone reviews could be anything, simulations, scenarios on the job, observations, really depended. So really hands-on making sure they could walk the walk. Exactly. All comes back to real-world competence. Makes sense. Yeah. But we've talked a lot about the shipyard as a whole. What about individual people, different needs, different goals, how they handle that? Uh, that's where the individual T&D planning guide comes in. Individual T&D planning guide. Sounds kind of personalized. That's the idea. It's like a roadmap for leadership development, but tailored to each person. So not everyone's following the same path. Nope. Each employee would sit down with their manager. Okay. And they'd map out this custom path together. Makes sense. Someone with tons of experience probably doesn't need the same training as someone who's brand new to leadership. Exactly. It's about meeting people where they're at, giving them what they need to grow. I like it. So this whole plan, it's super thorough, makes you wonder, did it actually work? Did they pull it off? Well, that's the thing. The document doesn't say. Oh, really? Yeah, we have the blueprint, but not the whole story. A real cliffhanger. But even without knowing the ending, there's still a lot we can learn, right? Oh, absolutely. For me, the big takeaway is how intentional they were about leadership development. Mm -hmm. They didn't just wing it. Yeah, they went all in, really thought it through. Right. They knew that investing in their leaders was investing in the shipyard's future. And they really got into the nitty gritty, figuring out what made their best people tick and building the training around that. Exactly. They understood that to build effective leaders, you got to understand what makes a leader effective. And that it's not a one time thing. It's got to be ongoing, always evolving. Exactly. It's a journey, not a destination. Well said. So for everyone listening, what's the takeaway? What can they learn from all this? Whether you're leading a team, running a company, or just trying to figure out your own career path, be intentional, look for opportunities to learn, and never underestimate the power of a good plan. Couldn't agree more. It just goes to show even a 20-year-old document from a shipyard can teach us a thing or two about leadership today. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, and until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep leading.